Good morning, students. In today's lecture, we will discuss some important definitions related to integral equations. So, first, we define two special kinds of kernels. The first one is separable kernel. This kernel is also called degenerate kernel. A kernel K which is a function of variables s and t is said to be separable or degenerate kernel if it can be expressed as the sum of finite number of terms each of which is the product of a function of s only and a function of t only it means the kernel kst can be written as summation i varies from 1 to n ais into bit here ais are the functions of variable s only and bis are the functions of variable t only so if we can represent a kernel in this form then we say that the kernel is separable or degenerate kernel for example the expression st plus s square t square this represents a separable kernel we can see that this expression is the sum of finite number of terms and each term in this expression is the product of function of s only and a function of t only another example of separable kernel is s plus t in this expression we can consider the functions ais to be linearly independent functions the second type of kernel is symmetric kernel. A kernel KST is said to be symmetric kernel or Hermitian kernel if the kernel K coincides with its complex conjugate. Means KST is same as K star TS. Here this star that denotes the complex conjugate. In case of real kernel, we can define the symmetry of real kernel by the identity KST is same as KTS, means the kernel K is said to be symmetric kernel if KST is same as KTS. For example, the kernel defined by ST plus S square T squared, this is a symmetric kernel because in this expression, if we interchange s and t this expression remains the same next we define eigenvalues and eigenfunctions corresponding to a given integral equation so consider a homogeneous fred home integral equation defined by gs is equal to lambda integral a to b kst gt dt here lambda is a parameter k is kernel the function g is unknown function now the values of lambda for which this integral equation has a known trivial solution means known zero solution those values of lambda are called eigenvalues of this integral equation or we can say that eigenvalues of the kernel k Every non-zero solution of this integral equation that is called eigenfunction corresponding to eigenvalue lambda. Next we define convolution integral. Let us consider two functions function k and function g. Then the convolution of functions k and g that is denoted by k star g and it is defined by the integral integral 0 to s k s minus t dt dt this can further be defined by the integral integral 0 to s k t g s minus t dt these two expressions they are called convolutions of the functions k and g these integrals Defined in this equation 1, these two integrals are called convolution integrals. The integrals defined in this equation, 
these are the particular case of the standard convolution standard convolution of the functions k and g is defined by the integral minus infinity to infinity k s minus t g t dt and this integral is same as the integral minus infinity to infinity k t g s minus t dt the integrals in the equation 1 are obtained from these integrals by taking the functions k and the function g is equal to 0 for t less than 0 and t greater than s next we define inner product or scalar product of two functions before we define inner product let us define a square integrable function it is denoted by the symbol l2 so let us consider a function phi which is the function of a real variable t where t belongs to the closed interval ab then by the square integrable function phi t we mean that the integral of square of mod of this function that is finite it means integral a to b phi t mod square dt is finite now we define the inner product of two functions phi and chi which are complex square integrable functions of the real variable t here t belongs to the closed interval ab so inner product of these two functions phi and chi is defined by the integral integral a to b phi t into chi star t here the star denotes complex conjugate of this function chi so the inner product of functions phi and chi is given by the integral of phi into chi conjugate between the limits a to b now next to define orthogonal functions two functions phi and chi are said to be orthogonal functions if the inner product of these two functions is zero it means the integral of product of the functions phi into chi conjugate between the limits a to b is zero next we define norm of a function norm of the function phi is defined as the square root of inner product of function phi with itself now by definition of inner product of two functions inner product of function phi with itself that is defined as integral a to b phi t into phi star t dt this star denotes the complex conjugate now phi into phi star that is phi mod square so we can define the norm of the function phi as the square root of the integral of square of mod of phi between the limits a to b now the last definition is normalized function a function phi is said to be normalized function if the norm of the function phi that is 1 so these were some important definitions related to integral equations